Hello and welcome back to the Billy Goat channel. It's been about seven months since my last video, so I thought I'd return from hiatus and take you through the final stages of a project I've been working on. The title of this piece is Source Null, and I'm using a 19 by 24 inch sheet of Strathmore Bristol paper. As for the medium, I've got a pretty basic palette of alcohol markers, and for the finer details, two micron pens. Near the end of the process, I'll also be cutting out some bright cardstock to add texture to certain areas. So here's Source Null in all of its unfinished glory. If you're looking at this thinking, what the hell is that supposed to be? Well, so am I. To be honest, the entire creation of this piece has been one big exercise in trying to make randomness and chaos look cool, or at the very least like it was done on purpose. The very first things I drew were these large angular shapes which I'm calling the pokey shapes. The orange and pink triangles on the left came first, followed by the dotted red arrow and then the blue outline shapes. At this point it was clear to me that this artwork was hurtling at breakneck speed towards Weirdsville, USA, but I've learned over time that the best thing you could do in these situations is strap in and stomp the accelerator. You have to embrace the weird. Channel the weird. Anyway, once I had committed to going full abstract, I realized that I wanted some soft organic shapes to balance out the pointiness of the pokey shapes. I used the size 3 micron pen to draw a black oval, aka the black hole, at the point where the pokey shapes converged. Next I added in the blobs, four red contoured shapes that could bring to mind anything from an amoeba to a booger to an alien cow's nipples. It's all in the eyes of the beholder, really. I had the pokey shapes, the black hole, and the blobs in place, but Source Null was feeling a bit empty and disjointed. I needed something that would bring these random elements together and act as a kind of glue, creating a sense of unity. Thus, the bubble streams were born. This was definitely the most time-consuming part of the process. Next, I created eight medallions, four using red colors and four using blue. These unique shapes are basically just a way to fill in blank spaces between the bubble streams and are positioned to add a little symmetry to the composition. And that's Source Null in a nutshell. All right, now that we're caught up, it's time to put the finishing touches on this bad boy. The task here is fairly straightforward. I'm coloring in most of the white area, which should create a nice contrast between the bubble streams and the background. I find this part of drawing very relaxing. It's easy to fall into a flow state as you fill in the tiny gaps between individual bubbles and see the wider spaces fill with color. I really like using these markers, but it does require a delicate touch to color around the bubbles without applying too much ink to the paper. Also, they're not the best for filling up large areas, not only because the ink runs out quickly, but I found that my lines end up drying into unintentional patterns that can be pretty distracting. To remedy this problem, I'm going to touch up the worst areas with another ink layer after this initial pass is complete. Next I'm going to take the eyeball comparison a step further by outlining the black hole with my orange color to create a glowing iris. At this point the piece is almost finished, but I'm not satisfied with two of the pokey shapes, specifically the one in the center of the piece that says null as well as the dotted arrow beneath it. 
In both cases, I feel like they need a little something extra to really pop, so this is where the cardstock I mentioned earlier comes into play. I've picked out a vibrant blue that fits well with my color palette, and now begins the slicing, and indeed, the dicing. Sure, this part is repetitive, but it's also kind of nostalgic in an elementary school art class kind of way. Inevitably, I end up ruining one of the cutout circles with an overzealous application of Elmer's glue, but the repair is quick and painless. Now that the word null is fully covered with circles, it's time to move on to the arrow. I'm finding these orange and pink dots deeply uninspiring, so they're getting covered too. Again, I'm using fluorescent versions of my original colors, only this time cut into triangles. I try to consider the placement of each triangle carefully, hoping to stumble upon some kind of divine arrangement of lines. But at some point, I glue on the last piece and inspect my new creation. This kind of abstract art isn't that demanding from a technical standpoint, but it's a lot of fun to start with a borderline dumpster fire and slowly add elements until it's molded into something interesting. I'm planning on making another process video for my next big piece, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.